What's up, everybody? And today we are reacting to the Green Beret who went on a one man rampage. This is by Simple History. Um, you guys know I love these like history kind of videos, especially if it's about like Vietnam or World War One or World War Two. I think they're really cool and I'm really excited to learn more about this. Also, Simple History are fantastic. I will leave a link down below to their original video. Go over there, like it, subscribe, turn on notifications to their videos because they are really fantastic. Um, but before we get started, if you are interested, me and my wife are converting a U.S. school bus and traveling the United States. We're going to be vlogging the whole transformation of the bus and the journey around the U.S. both on YouTube and Instagram on a second channel called Original Adventures. Links down below for that. Also, we recently reached 400,000 subscribers. Amazing. You're incredible. I love you guys. Uh, I'm speechless. I don't really know what to say. It's just weird that it's even happened. It really is, but you guys are amazing. Anyway, without further ado, let's shut up, let's pop this up, and let's react to it, shall we? Simple History presents... Simple History are awesome. They might be one of my favorite channels on YouTube. The Green Beret, who went on a one-man rampage. Roy Benavidez, the Vietnam War. So it was during Vietnam War. Good old Roy Benavidez with his Green Beret. Happy with that. Roy Benavidez's life had been rough as a child. Both okay. his parents had died. He Holy. was bullied by his classmates because of his mixed Yakui Indian and Mexican heritage. That's really he had to sad. leave school in eighth grade to help his family. At the age of 19, Benavidez joined the army, serving in the Korean War in the Texas Army National Guard. He married... I know nothing, absolutely nothing about the Korean War. Let me know in the comments if there's any good videos about that. I'd love to know more about Korean War. I literally know zero about the Korean War. Hilaria Lala Coy Benavidez in 1959 and completed airborne training, becoming assigned to the 82nd Airborne Division. Nice. In 1966, Sergeant Roy Benavidez was in hospital after stepping on a landmine. Damn. Doctors said he would never walk again. He had been sent to Vietnam in 1965 as an advisor for the ARVN troops there. Okay. Benavidez was carrying out a classified operation alone to gather evidence that the North Vietnamese troops were posing as Viet Cong. While he was on patrol along a narrow trail disguised as a Viet Cong guerrilla, he stepped on a landmine. Out. Sometime later, a squad of Marines came across Benavidez. They initially thought it was a booby trap. Yeah. were surprised when they flipped him over and discovered the man in Viet Cong pajamas was Hispanic and wearing U.S. Army dog tags. Yeah. He was soon evacuated to the hospital. That's crazy. So this guy's already got an absolutely insane story before we obviously find out about this rampage he does. That's crazy that they managed to just, like, find him and be like, oh, this guy's a U.S. soldier. That's so nuts. In hospital in the U.S. two months later, Benavides had recovered and awoke. His memories came back to him. The doctor told him he would never walk again. Two months later? Is that what they said? They say two months later? Two months later? Holy. Walk again. His spine had been damaged and his brain had rattled in his skull. Damn. Nevertheless, Benavidez, sitting in his wheelchair, begged the doctors not to discharge him from the army. The army was his life. Yeah, Returned, sure. Benavidez got up from his bed night after night, dragging himself to the wall and putting weight on his legs. Damn. Weeks, he pushed through the pain, going further in distance than before, which surprised the doctors. Six months later, with his wife Lala's support, Roy Benavides walked out of the hospital. Good lad. Overcome. That's what he did. Adapt and survive. He did it, guys. That's pretty impressive. He was promised only a desk job at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, but determined and exercising every day. He trained vigorously and qualified for the special forces, also known as the Green Berets. Amazing. He would be assigned to Detachment B-56, 5th Special Forces Group Airborne, 1st Special Forces. Yeah. That's amazing. Six hours. What a legend. Now it was 1968. Staff Sergeant Roy Benavidez, now with a code name Tango Mike Mike, was... So he actually had been in the military for a long time at this point, like quite a long time. Back in Vietnam, there was off duty attending church, but his mind was fixed on the panicking radio chatter from the front lines. In Loc Ninh, Vietnam, near the Cambodian border, a 12 man special forces reconnaissance team, which included his close friends, Sergeant First Class Leroy Wright, Staff Sergeant Lloyd Frenchy Mousseau, Specialist Four Brian O'Connor, 
and nine Montagnard tribesmen who are part of the Civilian Irregular Defense Group Program, or okay. CIDG, were surrounded by a battalion oh, numbering 1,000 battle-hardened North Vietnamese soldiers. I feel like this needs to be a movie. Like, this 100% needs to be a movie. It's pretty damn amazing so far. Everyone in the unit had been wounded or killed in earlier fighting, and three of the helicopters sent to rescue them had been amazing. unable to extract them due to heavy enemy fire. When the that helicopters really sucks. returned, they were riddled with bullets. One of them, the door gunner, Michael Craig, age 19, had been hit several times and died in Benavidez's arms. Oh. There was no way Benavidez was going to leave his friends out in the jungle. Benavidez jumped onto a returning helicopter that was going back in, volunteering so quickly that he didn't have time to get his M16, so was only armed with a Bowie knife and medical supplies. Is this who they based Rambo after? Is this who they based the is, is this who the base Rambo after? Benavidez described it as going into autopilot. Yep. As he was approaching the extraction zone, Benavidez realized his fellow team members were too severely wounded to run the distance to the helicopter. There was so much enemy gunfire that the pilot, Larry McKibben, had to zigzag in an attempt to dodge it, but was nevertheless able to provide covering fire. Damn. Benavidez jumped out with a medical bag, ran through the jungle to the wounded men under heavy enemy fire, taking a shot to the leg, which he initially thought was a thorn bush. He found Musso first against a tree whose eyeball had been shot out and was hanging down his cheek. Oh my days! But was determined to keep shooting back. The CIDG were in a pool of blood and patched up as best they could. Benavidez dragged everyone into a defensible position to direct their fire at the enemy and provided morphine to the wounded. Wow. He then saw O'Connor and an interpreter CIDG who he motioned to to move over to him. But the gunfire started again and they took cover. This is incredible. If this is a true story, which I'm presuming it is, this is incredible. Another round then hit Benavidez in his thigh. On adrenaline, he popped the green smoke for McKibben in the rescue helicopter to pick them up. While everyone who could move got into the chopper, he suppressed the tree line with an AK-47 he had picked up to cover O'Connor and the interpreter who crawled towards the helicopter. Good lad. Now Benavides was looking for the team leader, Sergeant First Class Leroy Wright, who had been killed uh. and also had intel on him that could not get into enemy hands. Benavides found his body and proceeded to drag him to the chopper when he was shot again, this time in the stomach and hit in the back by shrapnel from a nearby grenade, knocking him out. Oh, is this guy not dead? This is gonna be who Rambo's based after, right? This is gonna be a thing. Surely. Like, surely. If there's anyone he's based after, it's this absolute beast. When he awoke, Benavidez was forced to leave his dead friend's body. Yeah. Disaster had also struck. The chopper had crashed to the ground from enemy fire. Wow. Child, the Kibben was dead. Five of the men on board, including Musso, survived the crash, as did O'Connor and the interpreter who didn't get into the helicopter. Wow. Benavidez pulled them out of the wreckage, dispensed morphine, set up a perimeter around the crash site, and called in heavy air support from the F-100s above, who dropped napalm on the enemy position. When the jets ran out of fuel and had to leave, the enemy machine gun fire started again. Holy cow. Benavidez gave O'Connor a third shot of morphine and took another bullet to the leg. Their position was... Is, how is this guy not... Bl how is it... This, sure, this can't be real. Surely. This guy must have been... This guy must have lost a lot of blood. How is this Surrounded real? Surrounded by North Vietnamese soldiers, it looked hopeless. But a helicopter finally came to their rescue. Benavides and the rescue team carried and dragged the wounded men onto the chopper, but the landing zone was still being fired upon by NVA troops to the extent that two men were shot in the back as they crawled to it. Shrapnel wounds to his face from earlier caused Benavides's vision to be blurred from the blood in his eyes. When he went to get Musso, an NVA soldier butted his rifle into Benavides's head and jaw and slashed his arm with his bayonet. He shouted to O'Connor to shoot, but he was too drugged for morphine to react. <laughs> Benavides pulled out his Bowie knife and stabbed the NVA soldier till he was dead. How many? So how many rounds is this now? It's like five rounds, one punch to the face, and a gash wound on his arm. How is this guy not dead? He then dragged Musso to the helicopter and killed two more NVA with an AK-47 who were out of the helicopter's side gunner's arc of fire. And then he made one more trip to get the interpreter and destroy any classified material with blood still obscuring his vision. Only then did he allow the others to pull him onto the helicopter. The last man 
to leave the battlefield. What a legend. At this point, the round that had hit his stomach had exposed his intestines, which he was oh. trying to hold in with his hands. Oh, that's disgusting. Just pop your old stomach in there, no big deal. Badly shot up and with no instruments left, oh. managed to take off. Nah, mate. That's gross. How did this guy... I don't know how this guy survived. I really don't. Landed, the wounded were unloaded and examined one by one. It had turned out that Benavidez had even loaded three dead enemy soldiers into the helicopter in case they had classified materials. They what? were left to the side, as was Benavidez. He couldn't move or speak because of the broken jaw from the rifle butt. The blood over his eyes had glued them shut, and with 37 bayonet, bullet, and shrapnel wounds... All 37! 37! This guy was like Swiss cheese! How did he survive? All over his body, he looked dead. The medics started placing him in a body bag and no. started zipping him up when a friend noticed him and said, That's Roy! That's Roy Benavidez! The doctor said there was nothing that could be done, but Benavidez mustered his last bit of energy and spat in the doctor's face, causing the doctor to say, I think he'll make it. There's no way this is real. This can't be real. He was flown to Japan There's for no intensive way. surgery then Brook Army Medical Center, Fort Sam Houston, where he stayed for almost a year. Roy Benavidez had survived six hours in hell and saved eight lives. Holy Benavidez's cow. commander had put him in for the Distinguished Service Cross yeah. because the process for awarding a Medal of Honor would take much longer. And he yeah. was unsure if Benavidez would live or die before he could have received it. What? Finally, on February 24th, 1981, President Ronald Reagan would present Roy Benavidez the Medal of Honor. That's amazing. Reagan said, if the story of his heroism were a movie script, you would not believe it. Exactly. Benavidez said of his actions, the real heroes are the ones who gave their lives for their country. I don't like to be called a hero. I just did what I was trained to do. Master Damn. Sergeant Roy Benavidez died on November 29th, 1998 at the age of 63. Wow. Wow, is this a legit story? Subscribe for more Vietnam War history videos. Wow. Wow, I've got to... I've got to, I've got to pull this up. I'm going to Google this guy. I want to see a picture of his face. Roy Benavidez. Is there a movie about him? This guy is a legend. There he is. Open image in a new tab. Zoom into that bad boy. Here he is, guys. The legend himself, Roy Benavidez. What an absolute trooper. Is there a movie made about him? There certainly should be, right? It says movie. Suggested things movie. Maybe there isn't a movie about him. There should totally be a movie about him. Maybe there was. Oh, it's a documentary. This is a documentary. There needs to be a movie. Because that guy. Graphic novel spotlights action of metal. There's a graphic novel about him? What? Graphic novel spotlights action of Medal of Honor recipient who, even in a body bag, refuses to die. Wow. I want this. Read full graphic novel here. Let me... Guys, look at this. Look at this. Holy cow. We need to check this out, guys. We need to check this out. Maybe I'll check it out in another video. Let me know in the comments what you think. That guy was an absolute beast. An absolute beast. That doesn't seem real, but I guess it was. The guy's an absolute legend, and he managed to survive. He is the real Rambo. I'll say that right now. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't even believe it, but I guess it is true. Again, some stories that you just don't know about the military that you think are not real are actually real, you know? And some stories that you would never believe if someone told you are actually real. Crazy. Members, you're amazing. I love you. I couldn't do this without you. I honestly couldn't make videos every single day if it wasn't for these members right here. So thank you for supporting the channel as much as you do. I really, really appreciate it. We reached 400,000 subscribers. Amazing. I cannot believe it. It's truly 
like I'm I'm speechless. Like I don't even know what to say. It's so bizarre that we reached four hundred thousand subs, guys. Thank you. You're amazing. Um, links down below to the original video. Go over there, give it a like. Also, link down below to my socials, uh, my Discord, my podcast, my Twitch stream where I stream every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, and my second channel, Original Human Geek, where I play D and D and a bunch of other fun stuff. Until next time, guys. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.